All right, so in uh, this lesson, we're going to look at, so this is chapter 11, all right? And we're going to look at permutations and combinations and the, sorry, and the binomial theorem. <clears throat> all right, so we call this perms and coms. Uh, outcome P1, P2, P3, P4, and that's what we're doing. Okay, so <clears throat> first thing we're going to look at is the fundamental counting principle. Uh, basically, let's look at the first question and we'll kind of talk about what it's about. So let's say you can, you're going out for dinner and you can choose one of three salads, uh, Greek Caesar or pasta, and one of three entrees, so a curry entree, hamburger or sushi from a menu. So how many possible combo meals of one salad and one entree can you order? Uh, so we can make a complete list of all the possible meals. And if you want to do this for real, I believe Kelsey's, no, Applebee's has a kind of like pick your own option, right? So you can, for like 20 bucks, they've got a bunch of different options for you and 30 bucks. So you can order a bunch, couple of different, you know, choose from a couple of different apps, choose from a couple of different entrees, and then you get a dessert or something like that. So for this case, we'll just simplify it to salad and an entree. So if we have, so let's say we choose Greek salad. So I'll put a G for Greek. And then I choose the curry as my choice. Or I could have a Greek salad and a hamburger. Or a Greek salad and sushi. Uh, what if I chose a Caesar salad? So Caesar salad, I could choose either the curry, <coughs> I could choose the Caesar, or uh, with that I can choose the hamburger. And if I choose the Caesar, I can also choose the sushi. Uh, yeah, Caesar, Caesar salad. Uh, now I could also, if I chose a pasta salad, you know, I never really understood why a pasta salad is a salad because it's got no vegetables in it, really. It's all just pasta, right? I don't like pasta salad. I don't like pasta salad. Okay. But some people do. All right, so pasta salad, let's say we choose a curry or we could choose a hamburger or we could choose sushi. So how many different possibilities do we have here? Are there any other combination, are there any other ways that I can organize organize what I'm going to order? Are there other, other possibilities? No, right? So there's nine possible meals that we could choose or that we could have. Nine different ways that we can arrange this. So this would be a pain if we had to do this, right? And if we were given 25 options for a salad and 13 options for an entree. So it could get really too much work all of a sudden. And what if we threw in dessert as an option? So we have a better way to figure out how many different possibilities there are. This is what's known as the fundamental counting principle. All right, so if one task can be performed in a different ways and another task can be in B different ways, then both tasks can be performed in A times B ways. So for example, if there's seven possible salads, nine possible entrees, and five possible desserts, we simply can multiply all of those together and get that there's 315 possible meals. So it would take a long time to name all 315 meals, right? So that's a little impractical. So let's try it with this. So we've got license plates. So how many possible license plates are possible in Manitoba? So we need, so we have six spots that we fill in. The first three are letters and the last three are digits, right? So it's okay to have a license plate that's like A, A, 
A and 111. So repetitions are allowed, right? So how many different choices do we have for this first spot? How many letters in the alphabet? 26. How many, so I have the same thing here, right? And 26 here. Now how many digits can we choose from? So 10, you've got 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So that's 10. So we have 10 different choices for that here. So if we multiply that all together, what do we end up getting? Seven, one, seven, five, seven, six, zero, zero, zero. So that's seventeen million five hundred seventy-six thousand. Okay. All right. So how many ways can a store manager hire for three positions giving, given 12 candidates? So now let's say you have 12 people apply for a job and you've got three different positions to fill. So what are the possibilities for this first hire? So you've got how many people to choose from? 12. Now for the second position, how many people are left now? You've already hired one of them here, right? So we've got 11 left. And then how many do we have available for our third spot? 10. Why is there 10 here? Because? Yeah, so you've already got two positions filled, so you've got 10 candidates left. All right. 1,320, right. Okay. All right, so let's have a look at the next section here. Okay, <clears throat> this is what I spend the most time in the morning thinking of what to do. I think a lot of us do. So how many outfits can you order if you have four choices of pants, five shirts, and six pairs of socks? So for me, it's usually like, uh, what am I wearing in the morning, right? Kind of stick to the same types of outfits generally, right? Okay, whatever, I'll stop, I'll stop. So how many different pants do we have? We have four. How many different shirts do we have? Five. And how many different socks do we have? Six. So multiply, oh, you guys can't even see that. Sorry. All right, so you've got four different pants, five shirts, and six socks. So how many different ways can you arrange these? Multiply these together and you get 120. Okay, and then finally for this fundamental counting principle, <clears throat> how many three digit numbers can you make using the digits one, two, three, four, and five if repetition is allowed? So when we say repetition is allowed, then that means I could have a number like one, 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 okay? So I could have something like 111 or 112, for instance, okay? <clears throat> so how many different numbers do I have to choose from for this first? So I've got five and then five to choose from and then five to choose from. So if I multiply all those together, I get 125 different arrangements. Okay, so now if repetition is not allowed, so that means that each of these digits have to be different. So I cannot have 111 or 112, but I could have something like 532 or um, 431, but these digits cannot repeat. They have to be different. So how many do I have to choose from for this first digit? Five? Okay, because it could either be one, two, three, four, five. Now, if I've used one of them, how many do I have left 
to choose from for the second spot? Four, and then how many left for this third spot? Three, okay? And the order in here doesn't matter, right? So if I were to write the five and the four and the three here, I'm still gonna come out with 60 different arrangements if, a, if a repetition is not allowed, okay? So that's it for the fundamental counting principle. Let's have a look